Trisha was planning to hang out with her friends. It was going to be an enjoyable evening spent with friends. Instead of capturing what they thought was a fun time on Facebook Live, they filmed something horrifying that would follow them for the rest of their lives. The Horrifying Death Story of Tanisha Hammonds on October the 20th, 1998, Tanisha Hammonds was born in Macon, Georgia. Though little is known about her early years of life, we do know that she was close to her mother, Renata Hammonds, and that in March 2018, she gave birth to a son named Amari. It's clear from all the pictures and updates on her Facebook page that she had a great time becoming a first-time mother. She was evidently proud to be her son's mother and showed her affection for him by the frequent posts of images of him. She was a devoted mother who wanted the best for her son, according to her friends. Unfortunately, she won't even get to witness Amari's first day of school. Tanisha innocently made the fatal decision to go out and hang out with friends on December the 23rd, 2018. Unfortunately, she never returned home. But how did all of this happen? To understand how the story happened, let's meet this woman, Flower Bridget. She had two children, her twin kids, Jay Sean Jackson and Jamon Jackson. In one of their birthdays in September 2013, she wrote on Facebook, I would like to wish my twin boys a very happy 13th birthday. I hope you have a great day. But Bridget was married to a bad guy named Jacinto Flowers. Due to drug charges, he spent a long time in jail and was released on parole in 2001. In 2001, Jacinto was possessive and jealous, and he would get physical when he saw Bridget with other guys. It goes without saying that the marriage did not work out, and they split up, but things were not over. Jacinto would not let Bridget go, even after they broke up. He even threatened to kill her himself. That February the 14th, 2014, Bridget was shopping at Walmart when Jacinto suddenly showed up and punched her. A security camera caught the fight and showed Jacinto leaving while Bridget was still unconscious. He was caught and jailed for a week. After that, he was let go. In all seriousness, this guy had threatened Bridget so many times and shown that he could do anything, but they still let him go. When Jacinto got out of jail, he did what he promised he will do. After searching for Bridget, the moment he found her, he was shot dead right away. He was later caught and given a life term without the chance of parole, but he had already done what he promised to do, and Bridget was dead. But how do these stories link? Bridget was Tanisha's aunt. When she died, it was very sad for the whole family. In fact, she wrote on Facebook that the death of Bridget had broken her family. She swore at Jacinto for taking her aunt away and said that every time she tried to sleep, she had bad dreams about him. She also talked about how sad it was for her grandma and how Jacinto smiled at her one time when they were all at court. You kill someone and then smile at their family and friends. That's really low even for a killer with a cold heart. But this case hurts the twins, Jayshan and Jamin, the most. When their mom died, they were only teenagers. As a child, could you imagine knowing that someone you trusted took your mom away? Jacinto wasn't their real father, but they looked up to him as a father figure because he was there for so much of their lives. Imagine the bitterness and rage they must have felt knowing that it was because of him that they were without a mother. The twins were forced to live with relatives, but things had changed. Their youth had already been taken from them, and they were now quite different people. They began associating with the wrong kinds of people and running into crime problems. Something horrible happened to them when they turned 18, ruining their life and the lives of everyone around them. After a fight at Northeast High School set the whole thing off, Kendrick Davis, a 16-year-old boy, and his friend were boasting live on Facebook about shooting at various homes that belonged to the twins' friends. They promised to destroy them until they noticed Jamin, one of the twins, observing them. Jamin went out and got four of his pals, including Tanisha's brother, in revenge. After he told them of Kendrick's threats, they all made the decision to face him. 
However, as they arrived, the situation escalated rapidly, and the two groups began exchanging gunfire. Sadly, Kendrick lost his life after getting shot during the incident. As if this wasn't enough, the teenagers were shooting in the directions of Kendrick's mother's house. Even though Kendrick was already dead, why they felt the need to act that way is still unknown. On the other hand, Kendrick's buddies were furious by this and planned revenge on the twins' group. Following their arrest, Jemin and his buddies were accused of murder. Since any of those involved in the gunfight may have fired the final shot, charges are typically brought against all of them. Now back to Tanisha. She met up with Jayshan, Jaman's twin brother, and three other friends on the day she went out. Tanisha was behind the wheel, and Jayshan was sitting next to her, doing a live Facebook stream. Tanisha and her friends can be seen chatting and having a good time in this video. Suddenly, a bunch of gunshots could be heard, and Tanisha was gone. Nobody else was injured in the attack. Then the vehicle crashed, and the camera fell to the car's floorboard. Everyone was shouting and panicking when they saw Tanisha was hit. Then someone called 911. Tanisha was found dead at the scene, lying outside the driver's seat of the car when the police arrived. Her other friends didn't have any injuries. At 8.50, it was announced that she had passed away. Later, Jay Sean would tell the police that he thought he was the intended target and that it was revenge for the incident involving his brother. According to Jay Sean, he was seated in the front passenger seat. He said he thought it was revenge because his brother had just been arrested in East Macon for murder. In addition, he should have been driving and that he should have been the one shot. Then, 12 hours after the event, Tanisha's mother's house was fired on in the same way as Kendrick's mother's house. And then, one of the guys that was present that day was shot and killed a few months later. A number of Bloomfield area residents felt afraid in their own homes as a result of the crime. Tanisha's case, according to the authorities, was the 40th homicide in the same area to occur in that year alone. 40 homicides, sir. We had 30 for last year, and we had, what, five or six more days to go in this year. This is scary. Residents were even scared to let their children play outside, keep their kids in the hospital. On Tanisha's Facebook memorial page, Renata, Tanisha's upset mother, expressed her sorrow. She said, I miss you so much. They just don't know. They took a good person that night. I wish you would have stayed home. In the meantime, the incident's footage was going viral on the internet. Even though Facebook removed it, some individuals were still able to download and share it on other websites such as YouTube and Fly Height, which is typically home to controversial user uploads. Within a brief period, the video had amassed 200,000 views. Tanisha's family wrote to Fly Height requesting that they remove the video because they did not want it to be public knowledge. You know what's out there on the internet, but there are, like, a lot of damage controls that you guys could do. They worried that Tanisha's son would grow up and see the video knowing the gruesome way his mom died. Amara is not going to be a baby forever. Her son's gonna have social media one day. I would hate for him to come across a video. After several months, Flyheight finally deleted the video, but it popped up again on several YouTube pages. This case is undeniably tragic. When did taking someone's life become so easy? Is the response to disagreement resorting to violence? Revenge perpetuates a vicious cycle involving innocent people. Such cases persist unless one party decides to be the bigger person and let go. Now an innocent boy will grow up without his mother due to a senseless dispute that could have been resolved through communication. Marie is now four years old residing with his grandmother. No arrests or charges have been made in connection with Tanisha's death, although the case remains open. The police urge anyone with information to come forward or make an anonymous call to Crime Stoppers at 1-877-68-CRIME. Since Tanisha's passing, Christmas holds a somber note for her family, a painful reminder of what was lost in this tragic incident. We hope that one day they find peace and closure.